What's up wizards? Today I want to talk about Redux. Redux is a state management library and it's kind of fallen out of the conversation a little bit recently, but it's one of the most popular state management libraries out there. You will definitely have heard of Redux if you've worked in React at all. So understanding Redux, understanding why it's popular will definitely get you a job somewhere. And I think low key that Redux is still one of the best open source libraries out there. Sorry for the lighting change. I left the curtain open. I didn't want to have to refilm this bit. But anyway, Redux. Redux is a library that lets you manage state in your application. Let's imagine that you have two components kind of side by side. You have your nav bar and you have your main body, and they both need to be aware of this piece of data, which is the actual user that's logged in. One thing you can do is add a kind of parent component and you can stick the user inside there. So then the user can kind of be passed through props to the main body and pass through props to the nav bar. But let's now imagine that you start adding some logic inside here. Inside the nav bar, you've now got a username menu in which the user can actually change their username. So this username menu needs to interact with this user. So suddenly not only are you passing the user down, but you're also passing some instructions down to the username menu on how it can actually like act on this user. And you start getting this horrible web of connections that's really hard to track down, let alone if we're on a page in the main body where the user can also do this as well. This process might be asynchronous as well and involve loading states and error states. So you can start to see why a library for managing this type of nonsense would be useful. Wouldn't it be great if the username menu itself could just interact with the user object. Let's redraw the diagram like this where the username menu arrows go all the way up to the user and then they flow down through all of these pieces. Instead of this being a component, let's just treat it as its own bit of data and we'll call it a store. These two things here we'll call actions because you're sending an action up to the store. You're telling the store, do this. Now this is pretty nice, but these arrows seem a little bit weird now. We're still having to pass all of this store information down all of these levels. Wouldn't it be great if the username menu itself could just subscribe to the bits of the store that it needed. So now I've added these big curly subscription arrows here and I can just delete all of these. So now the username menus themselves just subscribe to the store directly and there's no need to pass down user all the way down. So this is how Redux works. You have a single store, you send that store actions and then you subscribe to that store from anywhere in your application. In general, there's only ever one store in your application. In other words, one place in your app where all the data lives. This can be really, really good for your team because it means there's very few decisions you need to make. You don't need to worry about where to place that bit of data in the component tree. All you need to know is it just goes in the store. So that store can grow pretty big. So Redux gives you a way of splitting out your store into different slices. Each of them can be responsible for different bits of your state, like your user or your shopping cart. And it looks kind of like this. You import create slice from Redux toolkit. You give your slice a name, you give it some initial state, and then you say how it responds to different actions that it's sent. So in this one, a to-do has been added, and in this one, a to-do is toggled. This model of state management is and remains extremely popular. Content warning, the next shot is in light mode, sorry. There are three main packages for Redux, and you can see that all of them are way up in the millions of downloads. If you've not seen a chart like this before, yes, these figures are weekly downloads. Nine million for the core of Redux, 6.7 million for React Redux, and then like two million, two and a half million for Redux Toolkit. If we look at a couple of other really popular state management libraries, they're nowhere even close. Both MobX and Zustand are like 1, 1.5. The question is then, why is this model so popular? The first easy answer is that it's been around for a long time. Redux was introduced by Dan Abramov in 2015. Because you could subscribe to a single store, it meant that things were actually pretty ergonomic. You know, you didn't need to pass props all the way down your component tree. But now we have the context API, so why is Redux still relevant? Well, state management is different from solving the prop drilling problem. And a lot of people, when context came out a few years ago, were saying, Redux is dead, and they're really missing the point. The main idea of Redux is not that you get to avoid this whole sort of prop drilling thing by these subscriptions, but that you have a single place where all of the logic of your app lives. This means that in theory, your app is more testable, which is you can actually take username menu and test it separately to the store to make sure it's sending up the correct actions. And you can test the store separately to the component if you want to make sure that user sort of responds in the right way. Because you're using this one pattern as well just to communicate with a single store, it means that you can add really, really powerful logging and debugging capabilities to that store. There's also a Redux browser extension that lets you peek into your store and find out what changed and when. Which, by the way, is super nice and solves a whole series of problems when you have different bits of state sort of interacting with each other. The second reason Redux is so popular is because it has evolved. I was using Redux in sort of 2018, 2019 
and it was extremely boilerplate heavy. You had to do a lot of handwritten stuff. You had to just first of all name all the constants, then have all these functions where you had the actions, then manually write out these reducers with switch statements, and all of this took time and it resulted in a lot of copy paste and it meant that funny bugs came in. And so in user land there were like a thousand different ships sailed into the night trying to solve this problem. And the solution we have today is because the maintainers took all of that feedback and came up with this abstraction. And by the way, the maintainers of this library are primarily Mark and Lens. I don't really know how to say this without saying it, but they sort of fill me with hope for humanity. I've met them both separately and they're like two of the most joyous, wonderful, smart people you could ever hope to meet. And if you've ever interacted with them on Twitter, then you know how approachable they are and how smart they are. And it's really through their stewardship that Redux is so popular. But because of Redux's popularity, it has a kind of unique problem. There are tons of tutorials out there in the wild that are written in this old Redux style. And tons of applications are launched out there still using this Redux style. And if you like it, if you still use it, then more power to you. But the maintainers continually get this stream of requests of people saying, why isn't this working like this? Or this library is stupid. And they say, no, you should be using Redux Toolkit. There are a bunch of courses out there that are years out of date. And the people who create these courses won't update them because, you know, they're sat there on Udemy and they're making money and it's all fine. So this means that Redux gets tarred with this weird brush of being extremely old and boilerplate -y, when it's in fact one of the most innovative, modern, best libraries out there. So if you think of Redux as this sort of relic of the past, then I think you need to take a second look because I think an old version of Redux might be driving your perceptions of new Redux. And new Redux is pretty sweet. The last question is, what do I think of Redux? I used to work on a library called XState, which was sort of in the same space as Redux, as a state management library. I think for most applications that I would work on, I would want to use something that let me be a bit more flexible with where I put my data. Like putting it all in a single store doesn't always feel like the best decision for me. So if I had some really complicated state management requirements, I would probably use XState instead. But if I came to a project and they were using Redux Toolkit, I would be pretty excited to work on that project because I'd know I was in safe hands. And if you want to be in safe hands in your TypeScript learning experience, then you should go to totaltypescript.com. It's got free tutorials on TypeScript, even if you're just sort of starting out from JavaScript. And it's also got my magnum opus, my beautiful, wonderful paid course. I'll have another video that you can watch here and a little face that you can subscribe to here. Let me know what you think of this kind of video. I really wanted to make this because I feel a keen sense of injustice about Redux. And especially the fact that these very, very good people, these maintainers have to bear this burden. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon.